Oh, please. Perfect. Definitely record. I th oh, I think we're live in the group. That's exciting. So I tell you what, mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and pop the screen up so I can keep my eye on uh, uh, on any questions that come up. But guys, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, uh, thanks for thanks for tuning in. Uh, we finally made it live. Facebook's acting up again, but we're here. Uh, DJ mm -hmm. Freefall. <laughs> tell, tell him a little bit about yourself. And uh, he, he's been doing a lot of projects and we were just on talking about it before we logged on. So he, here he is. <laughs> Yeah, what's up? My name is Jose. I go by DJ Freefall. Uh, I've been playing for a while. And uh, recently, the last few years or the last year and a half, I kind of got away from DJing and got more into uh, production, like in depth, like really down the rabbit hole type thing. Uh, but yeah, it's been going pretty good. So I can't complain. You, you were changing your name, right? As a producer versus a yeah, DJ? Yeah, so like uh, the artist name I'm going to be using is uh, Human Freefall because uh, just didn't want it to be like any conflict of interest with like any other people. And there's a, there's a guy from California that's using uh, the free fall moniker as well. So it's human free fall. Yeah. Human free fall. And you said you were working on a, a, a record, like a, like a pr album produce. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so like I, uh, I mean, I've been working on quite a few, but the, the one that's coming out, like, uh, like most recently is called Savage and that's dropping next Friday. So and you have like a record label behind you or is nope, it i'm releasing everything on distro kid i'm not trying to uh i just i don't i you know i i've given up a lot i i gave up my seven night a week uh dj gig schedule and money to produce music and i think the last thing i want to do is when i finally get the opportunity to release my music is to have a label tell me when and when when and where I can release my songs and how I should change it up so that it fits more to their standard or like, Hey, we're not going to, we, we like your song, but we're going to give it to this artist first. And you're going to be the co-writer because we feel like this is the, you know, the way to, to do things type thing. So I, I don't want to deal with all that shit, man. I just rather <laughs> on my own. You, you want your own creative freedom. Or like <laughs> I just wanted, like if I want to record a fart and sample it and just make it a song and not have, you know, uh anyone tell me whether i can or not you know that's why i'm doing it so yeah. <laughs> okay well that's I, record a part, though. I probably think of something a little better but yeah so he, he also has some projects that i'm a huge fan of uh he was doing the old school video game uh projects yeah, yeah. <laughs> I even got my uh, my Zelda a couple. Yeah, that's years. awesome! Hell yeah, <laughs> I got my little. I don't know if you can see them in the background there. I got like my little. Uh, oh, I see Mario. Yeah. Yeah, Mario, Chung, Mega Man, uh, Mega Man, and Sonic back there. <laughs> that's so dope, bro. So you were saying, like, I don't know, we were talking about like, so many different things, and then he was like, "Oh, there's another program uh, you do through your phone that you were doing meta tagging, I guess." Uh, well, so here's the thing. Um, it's funny because we, we literally did a whole tagging thing with Beloved like, uh, like last week. <laughs> I missed it, man. I, I wish I got, I got to see it. I'm going to have to go back and check it out. Um, so, yeah, with, with, uh, so the, the issue I was having is um, I, I've been kind of reluctant to switch over to Catalina. And, uh, you know, once you do, your iTunes uh, is no longer there. So it's replaced by the music app. So we needed a solution that would be able to uh, maybe, like, still use my – playlist and all that stuff and uh, I researched this like a year and a half ago when I started uh, creating the crate manager which is another like DJ I, got, I go off into tangents so like whenever I go off really bad just stop me no. but, uh, so more knowledge the better man I'm enjoying yeah. every minute of it <laughs> so I came across two programs that were really dope uh, Bliss HQ is one of them uh, shouts to Dan Gravel for giving me uh, the license to try it out. It's a program that remotely accesses your DJ library and you set up certain rules and like uh, parameters and it, it checks uh, your library according to the rules that you have. And then it tells you, okay, like this is, uh, you know, this is incorrect or this is not. Uh, and then you can have it update your shit for you automatically. And BeatTunes does the same thing. So BeatTunes is the one that was leading up to, um, so BeatTunes 5 is like iTunes, except it's like iTunes on steroids. And if you, uh, can I do a share screen real quick? Yeah, I uh, gave you permissions, man. It's all yours. Oh, nice. Woohoo. <laughs> all right, so what I did, um, all right, well, let me just back up to the problem. So the, the issue that I had was with, um, with iTunes, there was songs that are, were on my original library, like my DJ library that were being uploaded to the cloud. And the, the whole premise with Apple and, and, and iTunes and everything now is that they don't want uh, people 
uh, like to have to physically have materials in like uh, uh, MP3s and WAV files on your computer, like eating up your shit. They want everything on the cloud where you could just access it. And so like some of the songs that I had that I hadn't played for a while got sent to the cloud. So like I'm at my gig, first gig back after the quarantine, and I'm looking for songs. I'm like, where the fuck's my shit? <laughs> so the iTunes and iTunes is like sending it to the cloud. Even though I have iTunes match, I've never had an issue with it deleting songs. Like it always copies everything to the cloud, but not actually like, hey, it's like an IOU. Like when I go to play the song at the club, it's like IOU. The song is here, but you got to download it. I'm like, fuck it, but it should be here. It shouldn't be anywhere else. <laughs> So when it started doing that, I was like, I, I, I need to do something. And because it does that, so sometimes it's just uh, like inadvertent things that, that come from that, like maybe having doubles or triples because you download it and it thinks it's there, but it's really not because it's another folder, the way that hierarchy that iTunes uh, kind of organizes everything. So I just went and extracted literally every song from iTunes, just pulled everything out, uh, ran it through uh, first the Renamer app, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal app. Uh, let's see if I can I'll pull it up here real quick. Uh, Renamer. And maybe I'll do a screen share real quick so you guys can see this. Through. Share screen. Oh, I got to do this. Um, I got to open system preferences because uh, I just uh, I just got a new computer. So I'm really kind of excited about that. But it's just still like now it's like, oh, like you have to go and do all the uh, permissions over again for everything for life. And they make it so tricky, right? Like they put the automatic box and it's like the one you don't, it's like the option you didn't want. And you're like, you just oh, click it. Yeah, I'm <laughs> in um, share screen. Oh, there we go. All right. So um, where is, where is it? Where did it go? <laughs> they probably moved it with the update right <laughs> no, no no the renamer app i just had it up and i was like where the hell did it go renamer okay, here we go so this is renamer so renamer um can you see the screen now you sure can yeah because i can't see it on mine so renamer is this a, a, a program that does batch renaming and what you have is these things called renamer lets and it just makes life a lot easier so if, if you look up here it says 187 hours saved using renamer so what I did was I, I grabbed all my MP3s and I'll show you here what it looks like, the, like the, the home folder. Um, DJ library home folder. So, I, so what I went to, actually, you know what? I may be able to show you on the actual drive itself. Let me, uh, and I got my... Uh, <laughs> It's about that stream life. Oh, all day. This is the best thing ever, like being at home and, and you know, I, I wish we could get paid like how we used to at the club to do this stuff. That would be really ideal, but. Who knows? The future is uncertain. I, I, I think that, the, yeah, definitely uh, happening. So, um, I'm going to do one more. So, so let me get this straight. You took everything out of iTunes, including your remixes and everything. And you just let one program rename everything? So yeah, so here, let me, uh, let me stop the screen share for a second and go back to, um, so yeah, like what you do is you just grab all the songs, right? Like you just, uh, like you go into your uh, iTunes music and like, uh, I think- Export it, them. Right, so I just put in like a dot, like in the search in the spotlight, if you just hit command space bar and then you put in like a dot and then you're able to see in the video, because what happens is the way that uh, uh, iTunes, the hierarchy for iTunes is like it puts everything in the album and then uh, the songs uh, or sorry, by artist and then by album and then the songs and then it's either compilation. So like if you're trying to extract all these songs, it's you would have to open all those folders up individually and it's tedious as fuck. But if you go and just do like a like a like a man space bar search, or like a spotlight search or even like a like a finder search. So you didn't just rip them out of the music app? You just didn't go into the music app, select them all, and then drag well, you, them. You know, I did, but I, I sorted everything by um by kind because there was WAV files, there was a, a, AIF files, there was um MP3 files, there was M4A files, there was video files, MP4, like all that shit is inside iTunes. So like I just pulled out the MP3s, and so like sometimes, yeah, I'm gonna switch over here so you can see this real quick now. Um, this is my actual. 
like what my home folder looks like for the music stuff. And what happens is like, so when I extracted all the songs, uh, obviously there was duplicates and there was some that the spelling was, uh, you know, the capital letters were off on some or like just weird and fucked up and underscores. God damn it. I hate underscores. Like that's like, <laughs> like I fucking hate underscores. And so like what this program does is let me, I'm going to close this out now. I just wanted to show you this. Um, stop share. Right. And we'll go back to screen share for renamer. Cool. So then, so what with renamer, you have a set of rules, right? So you say, okay, first of all, I want you to find underscores. If you find an underscore, I want you to replace it with a whatever you want. So like in my case, I just put a space. Then I want you to convert the case uh, and I want you to capitalize the first letter and then like have every other letter normal. And then you see like it just does that. And there's like oh, now if there's a dot in there, so like, you know, like if I'm typing in Wu-Tang Clan cream, I don't want to type C dot R dot yeah. E. Like, fuck, man. I just, I just want to type cream and play it. So like all the songs that have the dots, it's like dots, you got to go peace out. Like OPPs and, like that, I think, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and yeah, so what you do is you just literally set these rules up, right? You just go one by one, but you do it in the order that you want it to kind of go and, and do the things. Uh, and then you drag and drop your files into this renamer and then you hit uh, go. It takes about 10 seconds, but saves you 187 hours of like tagging, which is like pretty, pretty. Uh, so, so you're just keeping these on, on an external hard drive now, right? Well, no. So like what I did now is I, I uh, once I did this, the first thing I did was um, do the batch renamer. So like once I did the batch renamer and everything kind of was like uh, capitalized and all the underscores and all that shit was gone, a lot more duplicates kind of showed up. So I was like, oh, wow, like there's a lot more duplicates than I had. So the next thing I did was run uh, Gemini, which is like a duplicate uh, finder that you can get on set app. And Gemini just cleared out uh, all the duplicates that I had. And then I imported it into this uh, BeatTunes, which was the point of the whole thing. Uh, let me show you what BeatTunes looks like. Oh, it's like, this guy's a trip, man. I can't, uh, I don't know how I can deal with this guy right now. This is great. It's so early in the morning, too. Um, choo -choo -choo, share screen. And BeatTunes. All right. So BeatTunes is here. So BeatTunes, right, it looks kind of similar to iTunes. If you had uh, iTunes, uh, it, so if you want to continue using your uh, iTunes style hierarchy of organization, like i.e. you want to keep your playlist and all that, you can just read your XML file from iTunes and it'll import everything onto here. I didn't want to do that because I was like, man, I've been doing this for a while and I, you know, God forbid Apple comes out with some shit next year and they're like, well, now we're not going to use MP3s anymore. We're going to use MP5s or whatever. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, just, just to make our lives uh, just more of a whatever, just a hassle, um, I decided to organize everything myself and just kind of do my own thing. So I just have it all on the home folder. It's like in music, but like it just, I call it DJ library home folder instead of like music, iTunes, all that shit. So then you import it into this program, right? But then you can do like inspector. So like, all right, so consistency issues, you know, let's say um, same album, different album artist, or like same artist, different genre. Like, so historically, like if, you know, if you were going to, uh, if it was like 1950 and you put in, you know, Buddy Holly, it should be 50s music. It shouldn't be like trap. So if you have a Buddy Holly trap remix in your library or just like, a, you know, it's labeled wrong for whatever. Like sometimes iTunes labels songs as like R&B blues and you're like, this isn't fucking R&B blues. Um, <laughs> This, so this program checks everything for you. So like you, uh, you just decide what you wanted to check. So like, okay, find me duplicates or like rarely use genre. Here we go. Okay. Let's, let's see what this says. All right, cool. Now it's telling me, all right, vocal clip, uh, genre vocal clip is a rarely used one. And this is just like a sample that I downloaded for someone. It's like, uh, Hey, can you play this? Uh, he wasn't ready the Kevin Hart shit at the club for like, uh, just like a this isn't it. No. <laughs> no. Like I, I have like this one sample takes up a genre in my like music library. 
and like i don't i just like like man i don't want to have this fucking shit on my library like even if it's it's just one extra genre that i have to see so like i i can decide what i want to do with this i can change the genre uh or i can ignore this or i can just delete it uh in this case i'm just gonna ignore it um and you say ignore it and then just go to the next one so like i don't see like what the fuck is this <laughs> I did Tino Pop. Dude, I don't even know what the fuck song this is. Like, I don't even know why this is on my library. This, this is exactly why programs like this are amazing. Uh, because it's like... But, yes. So, like, yeah, I would delete that shit. Okay, and then, so, like, all right. Um, spelling issues. Misspelled artist, uh, you know, misspelled artist name. Here we go. Here's a good one. Let's inspect this one. This is like, I think every DJ is, uh, you know, even if you're like the most meticulous person like myself, you'll have uh, instances like this. So it's like, okay. So how do you spell I'm, Run DMC? Is there a dash? Oh, it's all, yeah, no, it's all fucked up. So like, here we go. I, I put, this is one of the things I posted on my uh, Instagram store yesterday. So, you know, um, I want to, you know, you have, I have some that are run like lowercase, uh, like capital R, U, uh, D, M, C, capital. And then there's a space and there's some that have a dash. And, you know, Lord knows I hate dashes and spaces, anything that makes life more complicated. So I'm like, fuck all this. I want to uh, rename the songs, change the artist uh, of the selected songs to run D, M, C. And that's just capital R, lowercase, uh, U, N, capital D, M, C. So I, I, I hit apply, right? And... So oh, it goes. And so once you hit apply, it's committed, but it's not actually done. So they just let you kind of go through like all the songs that you want to do. Uh, and then when you're ready to do, uh, like when you go through all your inspection and you see all your consistency issues, and you go to pending solutions and you just hit apply. So like in this one, it's like that, that one that was the genre. And this one is the change artist run DMC. So now you're delete this shit. Commit to all solutions. Boom. So if I go to library now and type in run DMC, it's all the same. There you go. And so, so the other thing is, so like with iTunes, it's like if you use iTunes um, with this program, you have to play the song on iTunes in order for it to kind of update the spelling per se. Like in order for iTunes to like recognize it, it, there's it gonna rereads be the, the file, yeah. right? Whereas if you do everything directly on B tunes without iTunes, it's done instantly. Um, and so like, it's got like all these, you know, they see the key uh, and it's got the grouping and it's got a mood and it's got danceability. Uh, also that is obviously it's an algorithm that it does for itself. What is the uh, name of this app one more time? It's called beat, uh, beat tunes. Beat tunes. Yeah. I think it's like 30 bucks. It's Driving. super like these guys are, they don't even have a fucking Instagram page or anything. Like I looked it up. <laughs> like, I feel like a lot of the greatest plugins and, uh, and, and, and apps that I've seen the, the companies, they don't really focus on, uh, yeah, like they're branding like they should, but that's kind of a good thing. Cause it keeps like little secret weapons like this, uh, from the general public. But yeah, this is a really cool app. That's awesome, bro. I'm glad you covered all that. I mean, just one. <laughs> I was wondering if you wouldn't mind uh, showing like a, a simple Ableton session. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys want to see, man? Um, I, I think probably it'd be best just to start out pretty simple. Um, uh, and I know you, I know you go way down the rabbit hole. Oh yeah, no, I'll uh, I'll try to keep it like. Simple. I mean, I mean, it, maybe at the end, if you want to show people like how deep it can actually go. <laughs> well, I mean, so this, this is uh, this will be this will be the deep end right here. This is uh, this is the song I'm trying to uh, release next Friday. I'm just waiting for the vocals to get back. Um, but this is Savage. Uh... Oh. Did you share that screen? Are you playing it through Ableton? Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't. I apologize. I did uh, realize that I was in. Uh, I was uh, doing that. That probably helps, right? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, I'm excited. This is great. Um, uh, 
Uh, so yeah, though, the, this girl is from Orlando. Like this uh, regular, you know, um, itchy. She's a great singer and vocalist. And uh, just, I had this idea for a record, and she got she got on and sing, and this is it. So yeah, that's a that's a little sneak peek of Savage. what what is going on here? Like that's so uh, much. Yeah, this is actually a simple project file. I actually have a condensed version of this one too. There's only 29 tracks on this. Um, so yeah, we have the uh, I have my Pandora's box drum rack that I I would have to cover in a whole another thing because that's uh we we already just kind of started going into that one uh, separately before and now it's like. So like what I do is I, I have this thing called Pandora's Box, which is just like a drum rack that's got uh, every uh, element that I would need built into one track. Uh, but where where do you purchase Pandora's Box? Um, I haven't sold it yet. I made oh, it. It's, it's, it's your own. Oh yeah, no, it's some, something that I made. I created like uh, using a using an Ableton drum rack and then putting um, a sampler device inside the drum rack. So that instead of having to like, so you program songs like this, so you have like a like a drum rack. Yeah, let me just uh, loop this area here real quick. So like, I had this uh, you know this uh, beat thing programmed here uh, on the drum rack, and I can uh, switch the samples that are playing without having to hot swap anything. I just turn the knob and a different sound plays uh which is not i not normal for most production people because like when you go to write a song it's like oh let me go and like look for a kick and look for a snare and look for this and look for that and then next thing you know your kids are 18 and uh are getting married and they're out of college uh and you're still looking for samples to work on your song so it's just, uh it's a little easier to just have everything prepared so yeah i just have all the kicks that i like and toms and all the sounds like kind of condensed into one rack and then I just decide which ones I want. So like it's like for example, uh if I want to change the kick, I just like instead of like uh going, okay, well I'm gonna And you designed it to do that. Yeah. I mean it's just you just use a um well I okay, so for the record, this isn't like technology that's like um like it is really uh, advanced for most, but it's not anything that hasn't been known. It's just really like hardly ever touched on. Uh, one, I think it's because uh, a lot of people maybe don't have the processing power to run something like this, um, even though it's, it doesn't really take that much. Uh, and two, people just maybe like to do uh, approach their production technique a little differently. It just may be more traditional where it's like, oh, I'm just going to make a song from scratch. Like, you know, I'm going to fucking go uh, chop a tree down and build some uh, some drumsticks. And then I'm going to, you know, fucking drum a, a, a table and then I'm going to record it. And then I'm going to go and learn to play the guitar. And, you know, I'm going to go get the strings. Uh, I'm going to go to DuPont and get nylon strings and do all this other shit because there, it's like a purist. And that's cool. But like I want to live my life and do other shit, too. So I like why we do this. So, yeah, no, so the, 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 um, the kick, right, historically a drum rack just hosts like a kick, so you just have one uh, or like, you know, whatever percussive samples you want. But in this case, it's inside the drum rack, there's a sampler device, and inside the sampler device, I have my kicks, and they're all sorted by key. So, like, if I want to, if I need a G kick, I could just scroll, and then it's like, if you look here, you see that the G kick uh, sample selector, you see the sample selector there, and it's actually like, the, the the different kicks that would play like all right so like let's say i want to change the uh the claps right uh i don't even know there's claps in this part here are there yeah sure there is okay so yes so like if i want to change the pitch of the clap Yeah. 
And it's all done remotely. That's like the, the, that's like the, the, the thing that's really cool about uh, about this drum rack. I gotta, I'm gonna reopen this because I, I don't wanna go back to uh, trying to remember all the settings that I have for this. It'll be like, what the hell did I do? Um, yeah, no save. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm trying to, I'm gonna close it out and, and, and uh, reopen it again so I can show you everything. Uh, don't save. But yeah, that's uh, that's the drum rack. And then I'll just show you some of the other tracks that I have on there. It's really simple. I mean, it's nothing like, uh, it's not anything like super revolutionary, but you know, I, I've, uh, I've learned too that sometimes less is better, especially with, uh, with production. It becomes a lot to manage. It, be, it does become a lot to manage, man. Uh, you know, the, the, I think the, for anyone that's sorting out, I mean, one of the biggest things I've, I think the biggest thing I've learned about production in general is that um, production is production. So like sometimes uh, elements that you want to, it's not necessarily about boosting the volume to get like your mixes to sound any type of way. It's more about reducing everything uh, around that item that you're trying to have or that element that you want to, to stick out in the mix and, and bring everything around that down so that it becomes more prominent. So it's like it's like the modern day version of uh, you know, uh, I don't know if Aristotle or whatever the fuck it was, you know, like with a big ass fucking block of marble, they just sit and chisel at that shit for hours <laughs> to like to build like the discus man and shit. Like it's not, you know, the discus man with the with his ball sack out like that fucking <laughs> you know uh, ancient Greek thing uh, is built from you know, a block and it's chills of the way. It's not like, um, so like it comes like that. So this is something with music. Well, I remember you saying something, uh, you watched or listened to somebody you admired and, and they gave you advice, but, or something maybe you had picked up about being organized. I can't yeah, remember remember exactly what that was conversation, a, conversation oh, was. I have, don't remember. I was, uh, actually wrote some stuff down, but I can't even find my notes. Of <laughs> All right. It's fine. <laughs> But I, I do, I did actually know because it was really, actually really insightful. I'm like, man, you, you know, if I ever got the opportunity to uh, go over some stuff that I wish I had done from the jump, I would definitely share that with people because I feel like it would be, uh, it would definitely help out. All right. So yeah, the drum rack is there on um, the low end, you know, I just have the, a sub frequency here for uh, the sub. I'm using, I'm using lethal here and it's, I have it uh, frozen, uh, but I can unfreeze it. And I didn't even know, know you could do that. Oh yeah, well, fr freezing the tracks is uh, it just um, frees up the resources and lets you um, it lets you uh, add more processing if you desire, like if you fancy. So, you know, I have my sub bass here. It's just uh, a lethal pack. I have the low end cut off really low here uh, for this sub. It's, the funny thing is like, I actually restarted this project on a, on a separate project because I've just been, for the last few weeks, I've been really going hard like, um, down like the mixing and engineering part of it and just using references and, and, and uh, that has really helped out a lot uh, when you have that. So like, yeah, if you wanted to freeze this so that you does not uh, use up CPU, you just right click. Have you noticed your computer uh, slowing down when you freeze it? Or getting um, faster? Yes, no, no, considerably faster. I mean, like, so I, um, for this particular project, I have like all these instances of like processing toward the end, like bass room and mix room, and I have an M turbo compressor, and I have a Ozo 9. So Ozo 9 is just a fucking like a CPU hog, and so is bass room and mix room, even though they're great. Um, you know, bass room gives you like a visual EQ that's like a, more like that like you could like faces you and it's not like a um like a traditional eq that's like a sideways uh this one gives you more of a, like a visual like uh, here open mix room so you can see this one. like if you if you're if you look to the right here the uh the frequency spectrum is here but it's um it's on the side not like not like sideways like this like horizontal and this is this made uh tom frampton is the guy that makes these plugins for mastering the mix and 
his uh, vision on it is like it, it's just to make it more like maybe more intuitive for people that aren't really audio engineers, but that kind of makes sense. So like if you want to bring a sound uh, closer to you, you just bring the sound closer to you versus oh, wow. like if you want to bring the, the sound further away from you. Uh, and this, like, if it's a lower frequency, then you just move the EQ down to like a lower frequency and move it further away or closer away. But then it also lets you do like uh, mid slide and stereo. So it's like, all right, if I want this sound to only play on the sides, you can have it play on the sides like this, which is, this just gives you a, a, just a more visual. Uh, is, is that just like stereo imaging? Like, did yeah, it, it's, did it's, it? just, it's just stereo imaging. It's it's nothing, uh, you know, again, nothing re like revolutionary that's uh, like, oh, my God, like you created some shit that's like blowing my mind. Was that just for one track or you put that on the master? That was on the, that's on the master. Okay. Uh, like the, so the way I have, um, I, uh. So like I, I there's an EQ curve that I found line from uh, Reed Stefan that he posted with his uh, ozone, uh, and this is kind of like the historically the um, the EQ curve that a lot of producers use. Uh, if you look at this, uh, this looks a little complicated, but if you kind of back away, there's a green uh, curve and there's a blue curve. So the the green curve is the mid side information. So every song, if, you, if I go back to this. Um, let me go back to this mix room real quick, just to kind of, because this will make it a little bit uh, easier to understand. So like every song has a mid band and side band. So like this is a mid band and let's just go up here for comparative sake and go to side. Okay, so like if you click on this green, you see that the green, this information is only being processed in the middle. And if you look at this purple one, it's being processed on the side. So every song, Technically, like every every track that you listen to has three instances of like information, and one is in the middle, which is the majority of the uh, information, and then there's information on the sides, left and right. So like the the curves that I've been using, uh, just uh, it enhances the the mid side, which is like the kick is what you typically have uh, in the center uh, and some of like the vocal instruments and some of like the really important because when you play stuff out in the clubs, if it's in stereo, uh, it's not going to sound as good. It's not going to, a lot of venues aren't stereo, they're mono. So like, it's good to do like a mono compatibility and to see. And then you see like the blue is the uh, stereo information that's on the side. It's like if you were to single this out, it sounds really weird when you, yeah, let me do it real quick. I have another program that will be able to do it. Um, so you can see it real quick. And, uh, what was some of the questions that uh, people had? Do you remember? Um, let me go back and see what they were saying. They were, they, they, what, I have it on full screen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no worries, man. Yeah. You got to stop me, dude. Cause I'll just keep fucking going and going. No, oh, this is, this is great. Man. I'm like the energizer bunny, man. I just keep going. I got personally a lot of questions. So, <laughs> All right, so like I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm using this, uh, the, uh, the infinity EQ by uh, Slate Digital. It looks really cool. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's not as um, like feature rich as maybe like Pro-Q3 uh, or other EQs, but I, I do like this feature that lets you just really uh, go from mid slide to stereo and left and right really quickly. So let's hear uh, what's happening. So this, uh, this, this is my song, right? And I'm just gonna play it. Hello, if it plays, yeah. All right, so right here, this what's what's playing is uh, all the information that's in the stereo channel only. So it's only the side. So if you go back to that, this mix room thing, right? It's this, it's this purple, but it's all the way, this this whole frequency band, but only uh, on the sides. Uh, and then like when you switch it back to the middle, this is all the middle information. So this is all the side information, this is all the middle information. I'll show you one more EQ that actually shows it all and you'll be like, oh, okay. And uh, it's more of a technical, like, like more like back end thing, but it's just good to know that songs have that uh, for processing and that you can process the side information differently from the middle, like to carve out space for sounds and for vocals and all that shit. It's not, it's not like, hey, here's a, 
I think uh, it's funny. I think Scott's like, hey, I think we just wanted you to come on and show us how to do a mashup, and you're here talking about fucking mid slide. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, imaging and shit. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> This is great. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything this in depth into Ableton. I mean, uh, uh, you, like, wow. You, know, you tell me what you guys want to. No, this is great, man. I, I didn't know it did all this. Oh, it does a lot more. This, you know, the I, you know what I did. Uh, what I do is Ableton. Uh, it does do video, but the uh, the export is not really that great when you do uh, video exports. Yeah, they're not really like a. Uh, I I remember going in there and the options for the export are limited. Yeah, it's like a 320 export like resolution and shit. It's like when, it's like a Nextel phone, like 120 by 320 or some shit. It's like super. Do you ever go into the other view and do some stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So the other view is critical. Uh, so the other view, I have this uh, here. Let me open up another one of my templates that I have here. Um, do, let me see. Um. That's really like the the. Hmm. Right, you created templates for that view. Yeah, yeah. So the the reason why we have the other view is actually the reason why Ableton exists realistically, and it's made for uh, just quickly combining ideas. It's uh, it's called the session view. And this is the arrangement view. So session view is where you can just compose your dance hall, Pandora's box, twenty twenty. House Pandora. I have so many like just weird projects here. I'm just going through this shit to see what's happening with life here. The Melody Project. No, no. Um, let's see. Let's see. That I have to do this though. I have to sit and like. Oh, well, that's fine. Uh, while you're looking, uh, you said you got a new computer. What? What do you? What do you have? What do you recommend? <laughs> I got a, uh, well, I got the new MacBook Pro. I got, um, so a MacBook. Yeah, yeah, I got a MacBook. It's, um, it's a 2.8 gig, uh, 64 gigs of RAM and four terabytes solid state. Okay. I mean, that's just, well, I, I, I'm doing like really like alien level processing and find out like really weird shit. So, um, that's why, uh, I ended up going with like a little bit higher model specs than most. But I, I think anything like now, if you want a machine that's going to last, uh, you know, even good for video and stuff to maybe try to do like 32 gigs of RAM and uh, at least one terabyte, preferably two minimum for video uh, solid state, if possible, if you can swing it for sure. But, you know, the biggest secret uh, to life is uh, <laughs> that Apple's hiding out is that a Mac mini, man. Yeah. That's where it's at. Yeah. The Mac mini is where it's at, dude. Mac mini, you can still upgrade and, um, you know, okay. So. Wow. Know. That's a lot. Okay. So this is a, uh, this is a, a house uh, template, right? So like, let's say I want to build a house song, right? Again, this is uh, getting away from the, uh, Oh, can you see my screen or no? Yeah, I can. Okay. This is getting away from the um, historical means of programming where it's like, Hey dude, I'm going to go and, pick up a rock from the floor uh and carve it out and you know like and waste five years of your life trying to just get all the foundation stuff done where you could just go in and get to work immediately so kicks uh i have all these preset kick patterns that i extracted from either made myself or extracted from that plugin captain beat uh, and what these are is just midi clips of grooves for the timing of the elements that i want to use for a song so like these are all groove elements for kicks. These are all groove elements for toms. Uh, these are all groove elements for claps. These are all groove elements for, and it's just what it is. It's just literally just MIDI. So there's nothing there. There's no information. So what I'll do is like you can, uh, you can drag this into either this view uh, to create something, or we could use the other view. I'm gonna use the other view so you can see kind of how that other view works. So let's say we start with just. Uh, Make sure there's nothing else over here either. Yeah, there is. See, delete this. Whoops. <laughs> All right. Well, not that one. I gotta delete this whole thing. All right. So yeah, we'll start with the um with the kick, right? And it's uh just uh oh, 
there's something else playing where yeah, i mean there's a lot going on for for, for just one note <laughs> yeah i know so uh, that was here uh, go back the this the zoom thing is like right in the middle where the button is so i'm trying to press it. okay where is these percussions playing from uh oh, uh -oh. Okay, whatever. I don't. I. I really hold on. Let's just uh move this out of the way. Let's see where the hell is this other shit playing from? Why do it? Why is this locked in this view? I don't want to use this. Did I put something here? No, there's nothing here. Uh. Okay, there we go. Hey, what was going on? I don't know. This shit just happens in life sometimes. You just don't have a clue. All right, so um. So these are all like kick patterns, right? So like, let's say we're keeping it at 125, right? Like you have my kick. So like, this is a pattern I want to use. And now like, all right, well, I don't want to use this kick. I want to use another one. I already have my sampler selection, uh, selection thing already set up for, I could just scroll through the kicks that I want. Okay, now I want to add a Tom, right? And then these are all different like Tom patterns. So it's like, So those things will just play on loop, right? Yeah, it's essentially, these are kind of like loops without samples. Okay. If that makes any sense. So like you could, you, uh, the, the loops can be modified to play like whatever uh, in sound that you want to play, but they're never actually really like tied to anything. Where, where's the sound coming from then? If it's just a mini note, like how do you switch the sound out? Well, the, so what, what what's happening is, um again. Sorry. Um, oh, no, no, that's a great question. Um, let me just find that. Let me find one that I it's a little better. It's like these are all annoying. Um, let's see. All right, tribal is good. So like, I'm just gonna drag this little clip right up here to uh the second link or the second uh box. So if you start with one, see why is it doing that? So there's something. There's something uh off in the matrix today. Definitely. <laughs> you the red the bill? I don't know what the fuck's happening. It shouldn't be doing that. Like it should just be playing the, the one sound. So yeah, so in the in the track, right? It's like if you go to this view so you can see what's happening, it's just uh I have a, a sampler device, right? And in the sampler device, uh, I have all the toms that I would ever use loaded up and all I do is just sample select the tom I'm gonna use. Okay. Right. So, like, you're not wasting time and shit. Again, oh, it's all it. you know. I think uh, one of the things I, I also learned that was like really critical from the jump was uh, avoiding to to do the same thing over and over when you're making like songs or creating. So it's like if you use it doesn't matter what you use if you use Logic, FL Studio, or if you just fucking bang rocks on a on a wooden table. Like, like don't. If, if, if that's your instrument is banging rocks on a wooden table, leave the rocks on the table and have everything set up. So when you sit down, you could just fucking go right to beating that shit versus <laughs> like going and digging that shit out of the ground uh, and, and, and finding it and, you know, and washing it and, and getting a table. It's the same thing with production stuff. So like if you're like uh, loading up a project file, then you're adding compressors and, you know, adding your master machine, all that shit, dude. Just have it where you load up your song and everything's already loaded and you're processing and everything's ready to go. And if you find yourself doing something like more than once, just save that shortcut so that you can omit having to do it. Because those are the little things that add up. It's not like, you know, it, it does get to the point where you could create a song in like 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes and maybe have it mixed and mastered in like an hour or two like completely but it's all it's only because all the steps have already kind of been like taken beforehand where all that's left to compose is the melodies and the 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 chords and the bass and stuff but that's all like everything else is all really trivial because it's all the same shit like all the songs really copy the structure of each other so so yeah just moving forward with the this arrangement part so like i uh, yeah. we have the um the, the tom and the uh and the uh the kicks so now let's add a clap so we just and 
and then like I was saying, you know, I don't want to use this sound. I want to use something else, like a different sound. I just again. Oh yes, I see. <laughs> and now, like, all right, let, uh, let's do like close hatch now. So like close hatch. Again, the same thing. It's just so uh, I just go and pick the, the hats that I want, and then just uh, you know I can actually show you in a different uh, in a different template. It'd be a little easier to understand than all, all this crazy shit. Okay, this is this this. I'm getting it more and more now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to a new one. I have one that I made really simple. It's like I made a boom bap one with just like '90s hip hop boom bap samples. I actually did I did post this uh, up for people. I think I sold it for like ten bucks. Um, so like, yeah, do you have any websites you want me to put in the chat? Mm, no, I mean, if people want to hit me up, they could hit me up on Instagram, DJ Freefall. Okay. Uh, yeah. Or yeah, it's DJ Freefall. That's it. So yeah, okay. So um, this is a boom bap, uh, like I don't know, building block. I guess what you want to call it. And essentially it's just, uh, it's like nineties, like premiere style, like sounds. I'm playing on the push here. I don't know if you can see it. So, um, this, again, this is another way of like, uh, like having templates for Ableton that you can do. I just hit my mic. <laughs> uh, so what, what happens here in this version of Pandora's box is you have the items, uh, Again, this is programming, right? It's just kind of similar to like what we saw having the uh, the patterns, right? For like the sound, except for this one, the whole song per se or the whole pattern is programmed. So picture this again as a loop of like a program loop of like a, a of a performance, but without the instruments. So every performance is different, but and then you can alter the performance to sound the playback with whatever instrument you want. So like the example here is. Well, that's not that fast. Um, so like 95, not 985 BPM, just 95. <laughs> that would be interesting. Let's do 97. It's pretty slow. <laughs> Nothing says 90 step up, up, like 97 to 100. Yeah. All right. So there we go. So like, if uh, I'm gonna use the push for this instance here because this is right in front of me. But the way I have it set up with the really basic setup is that you scroll through all these uh, sounds just by turning my knobs like you know again and uh yeah i mean so it's just you know you have the beat that you kind of like and you know you can program but then you can always go back and change the sounds really quickly and so that these are different like um like beat progressions or patterns so like you have the regular boom bap and then you have like boom bap too and you can even do like this is dance hall but just to show you how easy it is to just to have like pre-programmed like uh like little uh, sets or not sets, but like the like genres and styles, so that you could just come in, drag it. And I have I have a few already that I've created, but I'm still building more. Like I have a dance hall one, I have a twerk, I have a house one, where it's just like uh, all the full elements is already there. We just drag and drop. Like you know, I could drop reggaeton, and it's like. The reggaeton is ready to go. Uh, let me see. I think I have. Uh, I, I see quite a few things in your bottom rack. So, it uh, what is it? The boom bap, hip hop, all that's all that's just connected together. Uh, boom bap, all, hip hop. All those, all these are typically, uh, uh, all these are typically connected together. Yeah, where it's just like a, just a drag and drop and boom, and you're good yep. to go. Okay. So I can find this. Um, is it chaos? I feel like I have a reggaeton one I just did. It sounds pretty, pretty cool. Uh, you should probably make a tutorial on how to how you did that. <laughs> oh, oh, but, oh, okay. Well, there's there's a man. This a uh, I I don't know if I got to ever cover ALC files in Ableton, man. But ALC files is like the fucking secret of life. Like, 
you, you know, you have um, ALC files in Ableton contain let me, well, let me just show you. So like, let's say, uh, I, this is the example I did in, on a previous live broadcast right here. Let me just make it, let's make it cool. All right, let's say that I'm gonna, I'm going to, uh, let me use Serum, because it's like the most easiest uh, VST ever, right? And this is, uh, this is just for, spend like three minutes on this. And let's say like, we're gonna create a patch on Serum that's like, like super fucking amazing. Whoa. It just happened. Oh, camera? <laughs> I lost the camera. Yeah, no, my, my uh, camera's down. Oh, there we go. Let me see if, uh, I, am I uh, back there now or no? I see your, uh, your setup. Your, your, your... The, the screen? Yeah, your, your, your picture of you went away. Or your, oh, live, cool. your live camera. Yeah, camera. that's fine. I mean, I'm not really pleasant to look at, but... <laughs> Uh, I don't know what, here, let me go, let me see if I can fix this, uh, yeah, it's a video. There okay, he is. I'm back. Hey. Okay, so yeah, let's just make, say, like, let's say I'm gonna just create some, like, uh, I don't know, the analog, uh, basic shapes, let's just see. All right, let's just, for, for shits and giggles, say that. This is like the, and I'm gonna use melody sauce just to give me something really quickly uh, for like a melody. And if I can spell it, it'll come out. <laughs> Jesus Christ, hello. And just, I just, uh, they just came out with an update for this today too. So yeah, melody sauce. I will use the uh, Max for Live one, and I'll just drop it here. Sure. Whoop. Maybe drop it. No. Yes. No. Okay. All right. All right, cool. Um, let's just do like F sharp. Sure, why not? And this is just, again, for uh, illustrative purposes, not like I'm going to release this tomorrow or anything, but. Let's actually find the like a patch that doesn't sound like shit. All right, cool. Sure. That works. All right. So let's just say for all uh, our, uh, you know, uh, all intensive purposes that you're this fucking EDM producer, right? And you're like, dude, I just wrote this fucking sample, like lead in your face. It's so dope. It's like crazy. It just has so much reverb. I got to turn this off though. It's like kind of annoying effects. Uh, no reverb, no filter. Yes. Sure. And no delay. All right, cool. So then let's say that you're like, dude, I just wrote this fucking patch. It's so cool. Uh, and like, oh, everything's got to have OTT on it. So let's just fucking throw an OTT on there. It's like, what, what's OTT? Uh, it's over the top uh, compression. It's a preset on Ableton that's a, it, it's, um, it's, it's multi-band dynamics. And what essentially what it does is it squashes the signal. It keeps everything like in between where it kind of should be. You know, I gave somebody uh, uh, the best explanation that I could give to somebody of OTT. And it sounds kind of weird and funny. There's a, uh, have you ever seen those? Uh, they're like these fucking like sausage looking weird plastic things that are filled with water that looks yeah. like a dildo that's like if you squeeze it one way it like goes out the other and if you squeeze it the other it's like it's like it but it always keeps the shape like it kind of stays like uniform per se so that's like i i mean this is like the weirdest thing to really compare it to but i just like when i did the explanation last week it was kind of funny so <laughs> if you uh if you imagine this like sausage thing being like a hand at the top and a hand at the bottom and it's just squeezing like the signal so that it stays in between a certain part. That's what's happening with OTT per se. And then these are the bands that de determine how much of that uh, squashing is happening. And that's a very common thing to do in EDM, I take it? Uh, well, I mean, it's like for, uh, yeah, I mean, OTT is just like, it is, uh, is a very, I don't want to say overused, but it's definitely used a lot uh, because it can give you um, 
some pretty interesting dynamics and it's a great effect. It sounds pretty cool on, on a lot of stuff. Not everything, but just on on on, on leads and some vocals uh, and even mixing and mastering because you could just turn down the amount of OTT and just give uh, some elements a little bit more air and just more uh, like like more presence and stuff. So, but yeah, so like, let's say, okay, so then like, um, and then, you know. But and real quick, how does Melody Sauce work again? It, it oh, keeps everything in tune, right? Well, no, Melody Sauce is just a, a plugin that um, Isotonic Studios made and they just re-released it actually today. Um, and Ava Beat, it's like, like again, I think. Oh. Did I lose you? Oh, no. I think we lost them. All right. There he is. Hey, I'm back. What happened? I have no idea, man, honestly. I wish I could tell you, but I really don't. It's probably, <laughs> it's probably the Isotonic Studios people saying, like, why are you demoing our shit? We have a newer version anyways. Um, so Melody Sauce is just a plugin that you just, like, you literally click on it, and it just shits out melodies for you. So it's like, oh, well, um, I want a melody and, uh, like, a seed. And so you just, it gives you like different options, like uh, light, light complex or both dark complex or both, uh, you know, both uh, complex. So you just click on it and then say like, all right, like I want to have sharp one. And it just writes you a melody uh, in that, like, so like every time you click on this button, you just literally shits out melodies. You can sit here. <laughs> yeah. So you could, but, but you could go through these and then like just uh, extract like a part that you like, like maybe just this part and combine it with another one. That's, that, so that's how I use this program. Like if I, uh, if I'm like, uh, you know, if, if I don't have an idea for something and I'm, like, I'm looking for melodies, I'll create like 50 or so of these and then just take the parts that I like, like the first two bars of this and combine it with the two bars from something else. But, you know, historically, and like this is something I found, like matching the elements of the vocals or like other elements of the song usually works way better than just generating random melodies. Because like it's all how the music and all the elements tie into each other as it plays versus like how great the melody is. The melody can, can be great, but it's always better when there's other elements that are complementing each other, at, you know, in the same rhythm or, or, or uh, tempo in, in, in the in method and way so uh okay. yeah i just deleted this and i didn't mean to hold on all right so yeah so then the point of this was i was gonna go into the alc file but you see that's why I, like i go into like sure yeah <laughs> so, um so yeah we're the edm guy producer dude and you're like hey man i just fucking watched this video on youtube and i'm like now i know how to use ott and shit i'm fucking gangster so uh you know we're, we're playing this uh lead sound right and let's see let's play it back and now, like, all right, cool. Well, we just need to add some saturation. Uh, again, not what I would do, but I'm just, for the sake of argument, showing you guys something real quick. And, like, oh, uh, yeah. There you go. It's fucking redlining and sounds like shit. Now we're good to go. <laughs> so, the, so, historically, right, what happens is, you know, you have um, this is saved. And maybe with a project file, so, like, what happens is when you ever want to refer to this clip, you have to always uh, open the project file or you could just, you know, something that people don't know, you could just open up any, uh, oh, I, I'm not sharing the screen, am I? Or do you yeah, see? we're we're on your Ableton. Okay, okay. So like, yeah, you could always go and like uh, click on like, uh, uh, you know, any group and you could still pull those elements out of the track and drop it into anything, which is a big deal. But even easier is you can just take a clip, right? Like say, okay, this is it. This is a... This is the game-changing clip that's going to fucking give me a record deal and uh, get me out of debt. Oh, god damn it. 
What happened? You all right over there? <laughs> I, I I honestly don't know. It's actually uh, a little weird because of the whole um with the computer thing. It's getting me scared now. Yeah, you just got a new computer. Maybe uh. So okay, it's like uh, you get, you can still see my screen, right? Yep. All right, so like okay, I'm gonna take this game changer clip and I'm gonna drag it into my user library, right? Into oh, hold on, let me close this up, back up, into uh into clips. And Clips is like Ableton's little like secret weapon of life. So like what happens is when you d drop any MIDI clip into Clips, it saves all the processing and uh, the third party VST and the sound all within the one thing. So like if I wanna listen, like if I wanted to preview this game changer thing, I wouldn't be able to preview this because it's through Serum. And actually let me delete this channel completely so it's not there. So it's like, oh dude, Yo, remember that one day that you fucking wrote that patch that was like super fucking gangster. You used OTT and fucking saturation, and it was like so great. Like, <laughs> like yeah, let me just go open the project file, and then you're opening the project file, and then your fucking camera goes out and all this shit. Like it's happening to me. Um, you could just go anytime to this clips, uh, in your user library and click on this and hit spacebar, and it'll preview the sound. Of Click the preview. And you can just drag this right into like a, a blank track. And what it does is it copies everything that you had on there. So it's your melody sauce, your serum, your cool serum lead, your OCT and your saturation already there. And wow. this can be applied to like anything. So like if like for example, I use drum racks to compose entire songs. But you don't, um, you can have like, uh, yeah, you can do like entire songs worth of, of, of automation and everything just by uh, using these ALC files. So like in theory, like this, uh, like this perreo, like I don't even know, this, this is a reggaeton one. I don't know if I got to finish all these, like mixing them down, but I started going through them. Okay. Right. So like but this this loop right these the, this is like the reggaeton like the like standard loop of reggaeton life right this this is like the sound that is the in, looney tune like, right, yeah, originated but like, like so the thing is like okay so like let's drop this in right and I can just drag this out and boom, all right cool let's say just for hypoth <laughs> It's my wife calling me out to call her back, but like I'm doing a live broadcast. Sorry, <laughs> um, I'm trying to save the world here. Um, like right, you, you like let's just have, for the sake of argument say that this is a uh, a full song, right? And you have the arrangement already, kind of. <laughs> the way. Hey. What's, up, What's going on? Hold on a second. I'm gonna put you on here so you can say hello to. Uh, I'm I'm doing a live broadcast right now with Scott King and his people. Say hello. Hi. Hi. How you doing? I'm on my lunch break, just picking up a public sub. There's like, yo, this guy has like 700 people watching this live broadcast right now. I'm like, I'm just. Public chicken tender subs are on sale. Oh, really? Are they on sale? Yeah, they are. Nice. It's good to know. Can I call you back in a few? Yes, that's All right. <laughs> well, I won't keep you, bro. <laughs> you're no, good. you're good. I'm done. Uh, all right. So, um, yeah. So let's say hypothetically, right, that this is a whole track, and I'm gonna consolidate this as Command J. All right, this is a whole track. So now I I will go into uh, uh, clips here, and I'm gonna save this uh, as a a clip per se. Here, nope. Uh, why is it not doing? Oh. Hold on a second. Yeah, that's probably why. Here you go. No, not today. Okay. Well, oh, I know what it is. Do you got to do it from this view? So, let's say that this was. God damn it! Again, I I give up. <laughs> is is it your computer, bro? Oh, I lost your sound. Oh no.
I think, I think we lost him. <laughs> well, hold on. All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to give him a couple minutes. I'm sure he's just had to replug something in and, and then come on back. But uh, um, thanks, guys, for being in the in the chat. I hope you guys are getting some knowledge out of this. If you have questions about Ableton, uh, we'll just go ahead and answer those. He seems to have a very, 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 very deep knowledge. No, <laughs> yeah, that seems he does have very deep knowledge of Ableton. Wow. I don't. Hey, Ray, your emoji is finally approved. You're going to see it on your next stream. <laughs> oh, I don't even know if I told you. Yeah, but we took your logo and made it an emote for, for Twitch. It, it, it finally got approved. We'll see if he comes back. Oh, he might be frozen. He might be lost forever. He did just get a new computer. Well, he might have crashed. Well, well, guys, I think that's <laughs> I think that's going to conclude our our tech talk for today. <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully, Free Falls computer didn't crash. <laughs> um. You guys are amazing, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, if he doesn't – I'll give him another two minutes or so. so someone's actually uh, someone's actually talking to me right now. Oh, he, he's going to try it one more time. Oh, he's <laughs> – we're going to give him a second. Yeah, Taco Bus, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm coming up with some cool, cool way to, like, uh, get donations and stuff. And there will be more information as soon as I figure out – how the damn thing works and I'll record my screen and, and share that information with you guys as well. Um, it was a little bit of the talks we were talking about yesterday for anybody that didn't, didn't make it to the open mic yesterday. Uh, we're working on how to get more things, uh, more money to the, to the DJs that are on the channel um, by donations that are connected to your own PayPal account. And as soon as I figure out how the template works, I've spent like three hours on it so far. Uh, we'll get that. I'll record the screen and show you guys how to do it too. And I, I have a lot of cool ideas. Just got to get it got to get it to click and if anybody else comes with the ideas uh that that would be great too to share with the community um, we'll be working on the schedule for next week also guys within the group if you're on uh, on the flyer those are a go uh the ones for for this weekend friday saturday and sunday i'll be posting those to the instagram uh, you'll be seeing them on facebook guys go ahead promote your show promote your night uh let's let's get the chat popping uh ray b your most going to be on 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 the chat as well uh, the, mocha, the open mic episode was yesterday. You could go through the uh, the timeline and check out uh, the recording. Uh, it'll it'll stay within there. I, it's not going to make it to the YouTube page because it's not really for that. And uh, oh, look, he's back, and uh, we'll see what we'll see what happens here. Let's see if it works. What's going on with your computer, man? <laughs> oh, oh, lost you. Yo, 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 oh, yo, 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 There, there, there he is. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> is it, is it time to return the computer? No. So, okay. Well, you know that I'm like, I can't just have like regular, uh, like technology. It's gotta be like fucking all this alien level shit. So I have this uh, application called turbo boost switcher. And what it does is it overclocks your, all your CPUs. So that uh, typically your uh, turbo boost on your Intel processes only come on when it's like when you need it uh, and it just only comes on for like a certain time. I have it where it's like on all the time and it drove my uh, CPU temperature to like almost 210 degrees Fahrenheit, like almost boiling. What's it called so that, again? Uh, turbo what? It's called uh, Turbo Boost uh, Switcher Pro. <laughs> okay, cool. And uh, yeah, I ran everything up to, uh, dude, my, like my CPU load now is, uh, 11% and my temperature is like 150. It was at 210. So I was like, I was like two degrees away from boiling water inside my computer. So probably why, probably why I was, uh, 
You're going to go to the fridge, take out some eggs and throw it I, on, the, yo, throw it on no, the keyboard? I'm about to, man. I'm about to get some of these uh, like cold wraps, man. Just put it on my laptop. <laughs> you know, that's actually a little scary, though, because it worries uh, me. About Could it those. catch fire? You think? Could oh, it explode? No. It better not. I mean, I got Apple Care, so YOLO. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so did you have to restart the whole computer? You lost oh, everything? yeah, dude. I had to fucking, I had to go outside and dig up the rocks and get the wood and do all that shit, man. So, well, I tell you what, I won't, <laughs> I won't, I won't make you go and open up. I know, the I've already got it. I got, I've already got able to know almost completely up. I just wanted to go and just, uh, I guess the premise with the ALC files is that you can save, um, like entire clips in your automation and your instruments that to load them up so that you don't have to, uh, load up the chain again and it's just again it's just just mostly about saving time and not doing the same things over and over again yeah especially if you come up with some cool little routine or if something's monotonous and you're you know just one click away I mean, you know, like like so even like with what you do with video and stuff like you know saving um like you know i would compare it to like you saving collateral within a, a, an application like final cut pro or premiere or like it's already staged, like your logo placement and everything is already there. So like when you go to uh, create a video, you don't have to reach for your logos. Like all, all those, uh, all that collateral is already there in the project it already kind of staged where it needs to be and, and, and not whatnot. So yep. yeah, just using templates, man, it's important and using reference files as well. Yeah, it saves time a bit. Especially if you get something the way you like it and you're like, oh, damn, I don't want to go back and recreate it. I was doing that with Photoshop. I was actually taking the guy's mixes that streamed on the channel and uh, posting it to Mixcloud so we could keep like a more of a fan base going. But I was like, uh, why would I uh, keep re recreating the thumbnail when I could just have like uh, a template and just, just put the names and logos and switch that out? That was way quicker. <laughs> And uh, I was going over this video. I, I, I don't know. Do you, are you doing like graphic design tutorial stuff too or no? Graphic design stuff? Uh, anything that has to do with DJing. So it's kind of like if you want to promote your page and you need a graphic designer or like a, a, someone who knows how to do a website for DJs. Or I, I was thinking about even having like uh, someone come in and show us how to do QuickBooks. So when you're charging clients and what you should put away for your taxes and, okay. and that kind of stuff too. So anything, anything that helps like a promotion, Photoshop, anything. Yeah, no, I think it's important. So, like, um, I, I could, I, uh, I think I know that you, you can share your screen with uh, with this, but I don't know if I want to do that all right now. But okay, I, yeah. I have, um, like, um, like with InShot, you could save stickers, right? And I have like stickers that are saved, and it's like all my. Here, I'll just get my shit and plug it in. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'll do it the right way. <laughs> properly they're like oh wow i didn't know you could do that i you're gonna share your ipad screen yeah, yeah. did you guys know you could do that through zoom oh. in the chat <laughs> i didn't know you could do that <laughs> i don't even know what this app is what, oh, what, the zoom app? no the app on your ipad oh it's uh in shot in shot and, and what's your purpose of that uh, I was just, I use it for, um, like creating, uh, DJ stuff, like, um, like, um, well, videos, like the, all the DJ videos that I, I, I make of like me scratching or, or, uh, chopping down trees to build drumsticks and stuff like that. <laughs> Whittle your wood. To make yeah. <laughs> I, I see here on your screen. Well, this is interesting. Oh, I gotta get this. Uh, is it plugged in? Should be. Oh, here it is. And of course, it's not gonna work now. Just to fucking do it for like driving on. Yeah, I was all excited about it. You're plugging everything in, and I'm like, oh. your iPhone uh, when prompted on the iPhone uh, the trust I'm trying to I don't know why oh this will be an epic fail 
I really want to show you uh, this. Uh, <laughs> oh no, this is gonna work. Now I'm now I'm gonna fucking go ham and be like, what the fuck, man? Um, stop share. Let me see if this does. Yeah, I've done this so many times I just don't understand. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's the cable. Oh, you know what? Share for the drive. Share screen. Connect this. Yes, I did. Okay, whatever. It's not loading up. I. You know what? I'm actually. When this is over, I'm gonna call you and do it separately. <laughs> okay. I didn't know it could do it. Yeah. Just like I don't even understand what the fuck's happening in life right now. But. Uh. So what I've done is, man, this sucks. I really want to show you on this. Everyone's going to have to hold the fuck on. You're not going anywhere. Interview <laughs> fucking uh, your wife has to use the internet to shop on blooming deals or whatever the fuck. No one's going anywhere. You're all stuck with me until I figure this shit out. Okay? All right. Well, you go, you go ahead and work at that. I'll just do some house cleaning points. <laughs> But yeah, anybody that didn't meet, uh, didn't catch the meeting uh, last night, we're just going over some different ideas to um, to come up with some money for for donation widgets that'll go to your own PayPal, and then we can make some sort of games out of it to get people to donate. So just something to keep in mind. And once uh, once we figure out, once I figure out how this how this app works or how this widget works, I'll be uh, doing a screen capture and and sending it to the group. Um, the spread the knowledge. Also, stream wars coming up. Uh, make, don't don't miss that one. That's happening on Monday. Meatball will be there to explain it, and there's a huge cash prize for it. So, we'll be more information on Monday. You got you got a free file? I think so. Let's see. It says uh, when prompted, uh, say trust this computer. It just doesn't come up when I uh, when I do this uh, trusting. Uh, I, I you know the other thing is I um. I haven't used Catalina at all, so like this is all on Catalina. So fucking Catalina, you know, every not, every not, fucking upper upper not thing. Not on good speaking terms, actually, at all. <laughs> well, I swear, Mac does that to D they don't give a shit about DJs. I swear. Oh, they know they don't. It's like, hey, you want to keep your songs? No, let's send them to the cloud. Like, you want your software to work? No, let's not. Um. Anyway, so. Uh, what I was trying to show you that's going to happen as soon as we stop the broadcast, it's going to come right up. Okay, so like within this program, it's just, uh, this widgets thing, right? So you can, uh, you can like, go and see like all the different features like, like fucking like, emoji stuff where I go like. Yep. And those are little videos with. I have, like my own media here. So like my logos and like favorites and logos. And yep. professional make it look like really good in a, in a simple manner I, I got my pen and paper handy what was that called one more time what the program yeah that program uh, that was called in shot in shot yeah dude this is like uh as soon as i uh yeah we finish i'm gonna figure this out because this is like what the fuck is happening but yeah, I, I, I don't even know how uh this uh ipad would even sync to the computer now like if it does it through the music app or it's like a whole new machine, you know? This is weird. General style. Like it's plugged in and it recognizes that it's there, but it's not like um like you know the first time you plug in your iPad to the uh to iTunes it says like do you trust this computer? And so annoying. And then you have to go to another Apple device to get the code to make sure you can go into another one. And it's like, what if I only had a fucking one device? Like, why is this got to be annoying? Well, that's why you have to buy like five or six and be broke. Yeah. I got an Apple device, but I have no money. So <laughs> I'm stuck with what I got. I'll yeah. 
I think I'm going to spend all my money in advertising and just hope I can close some clients. Like, I, I don't know. This whole fucking last three months has been shitty. So whatever. <laughs> well, you've been killing it with, uh, with this, uh, the concept, man. It's been, it's been a great thing and it's always good to uh, be a service to other people. You know? and, and, and thank you for being a part of it. It really means a lot to me and the guys. Oh, you're welcome. I'm, uh, sorry for like, uh, ranting and like going off on tangents because it's kind of like my thing but you know like uh if you give me a clear and defined uh, definitive purpose or like you know uh all the action i can help you as long as it's clearly defined because well, <laughs> go off and be like wow i think you had like one more thing you were trying to do or showing with ableton yeah, is that yeah. before we before we crash we, we could we could finish up with that and then uh, uh I'll, if there's any questions i'll shoot them to you yeah no i mean the, the, the thing that i just was trying to highlight it was just uh saving like entire songs as a uh, alc file okay um, instead of um like if, if let's see if this loads up oh there you go but like yeah so you just saw uh, clips and we're gonna drop this into um into the user library into clips and uh it's gonna save so, like this is gonna copy actually all the files and everything that's on there uh, and the arrangement. So let's say he just doesn't delete this later. He copies everything. So like, yeah, we delete this, close it out. And so like, for all intents and purposes, if this was a full song, you could just drag and drop this clip right into uh, any track in Ableton and you have your full song that's ready to go, uh, load it up. But that can also be previewed because it's an ALC clip and it has all your processing already on here. And the, the thing about this is like, um, so like if you were to have this clip in session view, right, and you were to say like hypothetically, uh, say, okay, well, I want to go and change, uh, I'm actually here, let's, let's say you had an auto filter on, on this track to like just go through several parts of the song that were just let off I don't know what I'm going to delete or the, the whole thing alright so yeah like let's say we have this auto filter right alright and let's just uh, say that we're going to map it out like uh, click on this and go to auto filter frequency this is more of an advanced thing but it's like it's cool to know uh, let's say we'll start here and go to, I don't know, let's say 100, whatever the fuck. And just copy this. Oh. All right, sure. Actually, you right click and you can edit value. That's awesome. That, that for years is like the most amazing thing uh, that we finally got. You can right click and edit value and just do like 50 or 100 or whatever. All right, so cool. Well, that's a long envelope. Yeah, it, it, no, but, yeah, but this, uh, I, I don't think that was the right one. What, what, what I, was it? Was it doing a filter? No, it wasn't. I, I don't think it was the. Uh, it should. I mean, that's really long. Here. Let's let's make it a little shorter. Like. <laughs> So yeah, let's just say that then this was the filter that we're gonna use, right? And this was the whole song, even though it's not, but like just hypothetically, like let's just say like, you know, uh, let's say that at 17 is typically where like the verse comes in. Uh, so like maybe like that last four bars before the verse gets filtered. And that always happens like in most of your songs. So you have that one. And let's just say that there's other parts where it's like, kind of like the norm or mandatory where filtering kind of occurs. You don't have to uh, go back and do these lanes of automation every single time you do a song. Like with this Pandora's box uh, template or idea or concept, it's just a matter of like, and it's more to the ALC files is that you, uh, you know, 
so this is the whole song. Cool. We got the whole song. <laughs> yeah. When you say this into uh, your ALC files and clips and you drag it back out, when it plays out, all this uh, filtering will already be there in the clip. Uh, and then, so like any other creative filtering or like effects that you add, uh, as long as it's generic or broad, it can be applied to any song and can be applied to the clip so that w when you drag the clip in, it's already ready to go to blend into any situation, circumstance, beat, idea, concept that you have without having to fuck with all that because it's already done. Got it. Yeah. In a, <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> well, Freefall, I won't take much more of your time. Uh, I do want to thank you for sharing all this knowledge. Your, your commentary is funny as fuck. <laughs> and, I, and I wish you the best for all of your productions and when, when, whenever you decide and when you decide to release what you want to release. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, the first release is uh, hopefully coming uh, next Friday. So God willing, we'll see. <laughs> well, well, once again, thanks for your time, guys. Thanks for, for all the, all the comments in the chat. Um, yeah. Do you, do you, so when you release everything, you don't release it from your website, you release it. Where do you, how do you, how do you, well, I'm, I'm, I'm using distro kit. I've okay. never used it before, honestly. So it's kind of like a new thing for me, but I definitely am not going into like uh, any, uh, not dealing with any label shit. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's going to be a distributed on all the platforms. So it's like, um, iTunes, Spotify, you know, um, Amazon Music, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Like it's well, everything. when you do an official release, you're, you're make sure to let us know, and we'll post it in the group. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, hopefully next Friday. Again, knock on wood, everything's uh, looking like next Friday. <laughs> Just be careful with your Turbo Boost Switcher app. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that while I broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay cool sounds good <laughs> well all right well once again thanks for everything i'm sure your wife wants you to call her back and we'll be in touch Actually, the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna call you back separately and get this fucking, uh, uh ipad thing to work man because it's bullshit all right well that's we will a not sleep or will not eat or will not breathe until i call you back and show you this uh, <laughs> you can be like hey guys sorry but we just happened to come right back with free fall and we finally got this ipad thing to work so <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end it. And uh, when you get... If you no, want. Yeah, no, no worries. I'm not going to do that. But yeah. oh, we could. Uh, I mean, all right. All right. Well, thanks again, man. Sure. All right. Yeah, peace.